Hello, welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series in Dallas. I'm Nick Miller alongside our front runner for the Season 1 Players Championship invite, Jim Davis. How you doing? How's it going, bud? Pretty good. We're bringing you in the sideboard for a couple of reasons. Talk about the hype leading up to the end of Invitational, mm -hmm. your deck choice, and to get some of that radio voice of yours from uh, Very the fair. Say What Radio. DJ JD, Say What's Radio, WUSB Stony Brook, 90.1 FM. Check it out online, facebook.com slash say what's radio. I like it. It's gonna, we're going to ask for that old deck tech if you can. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But uh, it's no surprise to anyone you're coming down for the Texas show as you did in Houston a mm -hmm. while back, trying to hammer out the Season 1 Invitational. You got a 23 point lead on Kevin Jones. You're playing Jess Sky Aggro this weekend. It's conveniently a deck that Kevin Jones knows pretty well. Right, I'd say it's more red white. It's almost like Boros with blue. Right. Because like the blue is so light that it's not really like a traditional Jess Sky deck. Like there's no, there's no digs and there's very few blue cards at all. Right. right, when we say aggro, we actually mean aggro. We're not going up to five and six drops in the main board. You know, you're not playing Dig Through Time and stuff like that. Again, it's like, it's weird because it's an aggro deck, but um, I played like the Ben Starch Red White deck in uh, two IQs over the past few weeks. And it's like, it's in a weird way almost a control deck. Mm -hmm. Where with Outpost Siege, you're kind of like gaining so many cards and you're playing so many cheap removal spells and cheap threats where it's, it's almost like Goblins was in a way. Where like, it can kill you really quick, but it also goes long really well too. So... It's kind of in this really weird middle spot. It's hard to describe. No stranger to goblins either. Yes. You've been playing, like, I know you've had some IQs in between the last time we've seen you play standard, but mm -hmm. you've been on the blue-white control kick. Right. You finally got off of it. Right. What has been the road to this deck? So, I mean, when the new set came out, blue-white, just all the decks that it was really good against kind of faded away, and the decks got either really big with Ugin and more control elements or much smaller like this deck. And it just, Blue Bites wasn't very good anymore. And um, I played it in one or two events, didn't do very well, so I just kind of got off it. Played Blue Black in an IQ, kind of liked it, but I wanted to kind of spread out a little bit, and try different decks. And, you know, I think it's good to like test your range a little right. bit and just kind of try a whole bunch of different decks. I ended up on Ben Stark's list of Red White, played that at two IQs. Really liked it a lot, but the deck was very reliant on Outpost Siege and pretty bad against enchantment removal. Mm -hmm. Like at the IQ I played, one person had Back to Nature in their board and I couldn't imagine ever beating that card. If I had a Chain to the Rocks in play and two Outpost Sieges, like, I could never win. So, seeing how Green White did really well last weekend, and sort of seeing how Manus Rider was also really good. I mean, I talked with uh, Andrew Jessup a bit about him saying the same thing about me as me with wanting to put just Manus Rider in the red-white deck. Not play just Guy, just put Manus Rider and have that be it. So, kind of theory crafting with that, uh, and then me and Lowry played some games last night. Um, I played a little bit about Control, but kind of got on this and was pretty happy with it. He's playing a very similar list too. So. Right, a lot of the deck choice and card choices we're seeing this weekend is based strictly off of the results from Miami. You want to have a deck that can beat the green-white devotion deck. Which is interesting though, because I feel like I haven't seen that much of it around. I feel like it's a deck people don't almost want to play because they see those like the Sam Black, you know, yeah. 500 life to 500 life, you know, zero, zero draw. Like we were actually watching the match at an IQ. Everyone was just like, what is happening in this match? <laughs> like, what is going on? Like all the cards were upside down. Yeah, they were you weren't the only one. It was really confusing, but I think people, people don't want to play games like yeah. that. So I figure people might stay a little away from it, but I felt the deck was good enough anyway that I wasn't really upset with that, so. So like you said, it's pretty low to the ground. You're, you got your two drops. You've mm -hmm. got Seeker of the Way, Soulfire Grandmaster, going up to Rabble Master and the Mantis Rider. Correct. And that's it for the creatures. All right. The, I mean, the, deck's, the deck is Ben Stark's deck, just minus four outpost. I mean, outpost. Uh, minus four Hordling Outburst, mm -hmm. plus four Manus Rider, minus four Chain, plus three Stance and a Cruise. So it's very low to the ground. We have eight two drops, four Shocks, and four Lightning Strikes. So it's the cheapest spells possible to try and take advantage of the outpost siege. Right. And you've got three Valor Stance and one Miser's Treasure Cruise there to kind of refill later on. Yeah. Valor Stance has just been a card that's ton of variety right now, mm. does all what you need. Very good in the green-white matchup as well. Fantastic, yes. Very, very good. Okay. Let's look at the sideboard here. We've seen these cards before, Disdainful Stroke, Glare Heresy, cards you've probably played in your blue-white sideboard. Yeah, actually, yeah, this half <laughs> of the sideboard here is my blue-white sideboard. <laughs> right. Two Bremaz, of course, coming in, mm -hmm. survives Anger of the Gods, things like that. Mm -hmm. Then you got some pretty linear stuff like Erase and Magma Spray for and mana efficiency to deal threats. Right. Two Sarkins, or is this guy just push punishing control a little bit? It's against the green decks. The Apo just aren't as good because you really can't afford to just sit there and try and like trade off cards with them. They're gonna like 
trigger some some uh, master gen scenes, gain a bunch of life, and kind of take over the long game. So against them, you kind of want to just fly over them. So you, so uh, you cut the sieges, and you bring in the ash cloud and the two sarkins to try and just go over them. And sarkins good in like in like controlling matchups as well too. So talk about you know transitioning to a wider approach to magic here. The ability to switch up decks. We've seen you in standard as a control player, but you know. Following you, we saw you play Burn at the Modern Open. You know, you've seen you switch up Legacy's decks. You know, what's having a range? You know, help you in terms of Magic? I mean, I think it's really important just to be able to do that. I think it's like it's good to be a specialist in some way, but I think that understanding all the decks help you, helps you play the deck you're specialized with better anyway. Like just playing a deck like this and being able to play it against control decks helps you be better with the control deck against them as well. And it just you're just good to not be locked into something. If control's not good, you shouldn't just be like, oh, I'm going to play control anyway. You know, like, I remember, like, Chapin used to do that back in the right. day. And, like, he's not done that in the last few years, and he's won a pro tour. He's a lot right. better in the last few years. Because you just you just can't build a control deck in some formats, and you can't build a combo deck in some formats. So you're just better off being a more versatile player. So. All right. Well, you're 4-0 so far with this deck, correct? Mm -hmm. You're looking forward to the Invitational. Any idea what you want to do there? Not sure yet, honestly. Um, the, the new set has... A lot of cards in it that seem very playable. None of them seem like absurd, but a lot of them seem very good, which is very confusing for deck building because you never know what pieces are going to go where. So I think it's going to change the format drastically. It's going to be an insane Invitational. It's the first weekend of the set. Like the set releases on the day of the Invitational, correct? Right. That so, will be the first event you can play with yeah, it, and they drop gonna that Yeah, it's going to be a, a crazy one. Usually, the first open of the season of the uh, format is like that, where it's kind of wild and people are trying. It's like the Wild Wild West. Everyone's just playing all these crazy decks, and having that at an invitation is going to be pretty wild. So, it's going to be a really, really interesting invitation. Speaking of which, what are some cards that are standing out to you? Are there anything you really want to try out now that we've seen the full spoiler? Um, as I said in my article, I think the Blue White Dragon is really, really good. I think people are sleeping on that card big time. Um, Black Dragon's pretty good. The, the green, red, green, and green, white commands mm -hmm. seem very, very good. I'm not really sure where they go. That's sort of the thing with the theme with most of the cards in the deck. I'm right. not sure really, really sure where they go with their powerful cards. So it's, it's going to require a lot of testing and piecing stuff together and figuring it out. So. There's, if there's one card we could pin you down to see you play at the Invitational, what is it? Honestly, I have no idea. I really, I really have a good one. I mean, people are, are saying, you know, everyone's asking about Narset mm -hmm. and like the blue-white cards. I think Narset's like very good, but it's really hard to evaluate. We haven't seen a Planeswalker with that high toughness. We haven't seen um, the like the Domri ability for spells right. or whatever. So like a, kind of like a, a card draw -y card as opposed to like a creature -y card. Um, Rebound doesn't play great with counter spells, but it's like a blue-white card. It's, it's very, <laughs> it's a very confusing card. I think it's powerful. Don't think it's great in like a straight like blue white like Drago deck like my old deck. Right. It's I really don't know. It's All an exciting right. set, honestly. Like there's a lot of cool stuff in it. So it's an exciting set, and we're excited, waiting for it. Hope to see you playing there, trying to lock up your invite to the Players Championship. That's, that's the goal, Jim. Thanks for sitting down with me here on the sideboard. Absolutely. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Dallas. Go see Wolves.